said, there are thousands of people along the runways, right? And I said, I said, why aren't they here? Sir, we couldn't let them in. Why not? Let's let them in. Oh, these people. And then they put in a, uh, a floor. This is for Manchester, because you know about flooring. They put in a floor that's like an ice skating rink. So we're going to tiptoe around. How are you, everybody? We love you. We love you. Great, great people. Manchester, we had some good memories in Manchester, right? 2016, but this is going to be, we are right now in the most important election in our history. But I'm thrilled to be back in the Granite State with the true hardworking American patriots. Last night, it was my great honor to accept the Republican nomination for President of the United States. We're going to win. We're going to win. Does anybody have any doubt? Does anybody? You know, it's very interesting. Uh, last night, we had an incredible time. And I don't know if you know, it's, it's driving the fake news crazy. They're back here. But, but the poll numbers have swung. If you go back six months before the plague flew in from China, the plague, the horrible plague, this election was over. This election was over. And then I had to go back to work. I had to go back to work. And then I went back to work. And we've done an incredible job in every aspect of running government. But I also had to start campaigning a little bit again. And I did. And today it was announced that Joe Biden is coming out of the basement. Because the poll numbers have totally swung. It totally swung. And they've swung like nobody's ever seen him swing before, and it was rapid. It was a rapid swing. Because they all admit that we're doing a great job. There's not too many presidents that have done a job like we've done, including keeping you out of wars, bringing you home from the endless wars. But they've swung. But here's what I don't get. Sleepy Joe's coming out, he said, in 10 days, that's a long, 10 days, 10 days. That's like an eternity in Trumpville, 10 days. I, I, view, I view 10 days as like an eternity, okay? So he decided he's coming out and he's gonna be out in 10 days. That's a long time. That's a big percentage of the remaining time. That's all right, he's much better off where he is. I think he's, uh, I think he just, we love Melania, we do. She did a great job, right? She did a great job. Friends of mine, right? How about those stories? Was that? just compelling and incredible television, but really, that was an exciting, a really good quality convention. Uh, really good. So many people. So many people. You saw some tragic situations, some really great endorsements. You saw everything. If you, uh, how about the endorsement of Herschel Walker when you watched that? That was from the heart. That was from the heart. Dana White today. I just saw it today, because last night I was looking at the speech a little bit, you know. We had a, a wonderful turnout last night. What I didn't like, it was, you, you saw this, right? When it was over? You saw when it was over? The thugs outside, because the Democratic mayor of Washington, D.C., it's another Democrat that's not believing in law and order. And you know, we give Washington, D.C. a lot of money to run it. But they don't do a good job of running it, the mayor. She doesn't run anything. 
And they, these incredible people from all over the country, all over the world that were there last night, they walked out to a bunch of thugs. And that wasn't, remember this, that wasn't friendly protesters. They were thugs. They were thugs. And the DC, the DC police are good. But the mayor gave bad instructions last night. That should have never been allowed to happen. When a senator like Rand Paul walks out, and thank God we had some good police around him, and they took a tremendous, they took tremendous abuse. And Rand Paul was in big trouble last night. He's a good guy, he's a friend of mine. And that shouldn't happen to anybody. But here's a U.S. Senator walking outside, and those four policemen should be brought over to the White House, and we ought to give them a medal of some kind that we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I told that to Rand today. And the mayor should be ashamed of herself for that kind of a display of incompetence, because that's what's happening in Portland, and that's what's happening all over. We have Democrat run cities. Just take a look. And we're looking at the whole situation in D.C. And tonight, they have a lot of people gathering. Let's see how that works out. They have to be able to manage their affairs. They get a lot of money. She's always looking for money. Could we have more money? What are you going to waste it on? I mean, spend it on. What are you going to waste it on, Mayor? And then our people walk out, and these are people from all over the world. They walk, including Congress, by the way. They walk out, and they get accosted, they get abused, they get spit on. It's a disgrace. And our country's going to change. We're not going to allow that to happen. You know, we're not supposed to be... We're not supposed to be involved unless we're invited in by the people that run. These are all Democrat cities, just so you understand, including D.C. So we're not supposed to go in unless we call it an insurrection. But that's a big statement. That's a big statement. No reason for it. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to have to look at it. Mark Meadows is here. We're going to have to look at it because we're not going to let that happen to people that go to the White House to celebrate our country. And a weak guy named Joe Biden, and he's weak. He's weak as hell. A weak guy like Joe Biden didn't even bring law and order up as a subject for discussion in the entire Democrat National Convention. Now they're all of a sudden, now they realize, because they've gone down like a rock in water, they've gone down in the polls, and now all of a sudden they're talking, oh, well, we have to talk about crime. Number one, they have no, look at what happened to New York. Look at what's going on in Chicago. All Democrats, all radical left Democrats, Look at what's going on in the great state of Wisconsin. Now, I will tell you, two days ago, we sent in the National Guard. That was the end of that problem. Look at Portland. We want to send in the National Guard. We sent in Homeland Security just to protect our couple of our buildings, including a courthouse. Can you believe it? We send in because they can't protect it. So we sent, they did a very effective job. We could take care of Portland in 45 minutes, 45 minutes. If that governor, if that mayor would call and say, please send in the National Guard, just like, we, hey, we did it in Minneapolis, remember that? The place was gonna burn down another few days. We sent in the National Guard. It was over within an hour. And they ought to get smart, and that's what they ought to do. So now they're talking about, well, you know, we want to... You know, they were taught, what do they call it? A friendly protest, right? 
Remember the idiot from CNN, he's standing there. This is a friendly protest. And behind him, over his shoulders, the entire city is burning down. 67 days from now, we're going to win the great state of New Hampshire. We have to. And we're going to win four more years in the White House. Within my first term in office, we've secured America's borders, brought back our manufacturing jobs, rebuilt the United States military. It was a mess. It was a depleted mess. Wiped out the ISIS caliphate, killed our terrorist enemies, kept America out of foolish, stupid, ridiculous foreign wars. Achieved American energy independence. And you see the price of your gasoline when you go fill it up. Oh, boy, that's a nice price. It's half what it was. And we built the single greatest economy in the history of the world. And that includes China, which was having a very, very bad year. And then the plague came in from China. We had to close it up. We saved millions of lives. And now we're opening it and we're setting records. We're setting records. Where do you see the numbers just before the election? They'll be released. And this is despite the fact that the Democrats are holding back Michigan, North Carolina. You take a look, Pennsylvania. They want to keep them. By the way, on November 4th, Regardless, they'll be opening them up November 4th because they think that hurts the economy and that'll hurt me, but our numbers are going to be great. We're going to have a great third quarter. We're going to have an unbelievable next year unless somebody stupid gets elected and raises your taxes. This November, each of you will vote in truly the most important election in the history of our country. I used to say it about 2016. This is now at a new level. Joe Biden is the puppet of the radical left movement that seeks to obliterate and destroy everything that you hold dear, including your Second Amendment, which will have no chance. Your vote will decide whether we save the American dream or whether we allow Biden to eliminate your jobs. And by the way, it's not Biden. It's not Biden. It's his masters. His, they tell him what to do, his masters. They want to erase your borders, confiscate your guns, appoint radical left judges and prosecutors, tear down our history, demolish your suburbs. You saw what I did. I ended the rule. You're not going to have low-income housing built in your suburbs anymore. But nobody writes that because the fake news doesn't want to write that. But everyone knows. Unless our friends in the suburbs have gotten a lot dumber than they used to be. They know that. They want to destroy your suburbs, indoctrinate our children, defund the police, and try everything in the book to turn our cities so that they look more like Portland, Oregon than what we're used to looking at. Never forget, they are coming after me because I am fighting for you. It's true, too. Today's Democrat Party is filled with hate, 
Just look at Joe Biden's supporters on the street screaming and shouting at bystanders with unhinged manic rage, right? You see it? It's crazy. It's crazy. You had to see last night in Washington. It was a disgrace. It was a disgrace that these people are representing the United States of America. It was a disgrace. Protesters. You know what I say? Protesters, your ass. I don't talk about my ass. They're not protesters. Those aren't pro Those are anarchists. They're agitators. They're rioters. They're looters. They're not. You know, you say that, and some of the people, not all of them, but some of the people back there, oh, I da how dare you? These are friendly protesters, right? Friendly protesters. They're just looking for trouble. Has nothing to do with George Floyd. Has nothing to do with anything. They don't even know who George Floyd is. Okay? They don't know who George Floyd is. They have no idea. If you ask them, who's George Floyd, they couldn't even tell you. These are just bad people, troublemakers, and they shouldn't be representing our country at important events. And we've got to stop it. Democrats have no complaint about the rioters and the vandals marauding through our cities or mass unruly demonstrations but they don't believe law-abiding citizens can go to a church together. You can't go to church anymore. You know how many churches are closed in this country? Because of the Democrats. You can go out and you can have thousands of people marauding through the streets, threatening other people, beyond threatening, kicking them in the face, doing what they've done. You've seen it. And they would have done that to Senator Rand Paul last night He'd either be in very bad shape or dead, and that would include his wife if those policemen didn't happen to be there. And they took some big beating. And the reason they didn't fight back too much, they don't want to lose their pension, they don't want to lose their job, because we've become so politically correct, everybody's afraid to do anything now. But they did a good job. The puppet Biden, who's just controlled so strongly, wants you to cancel weddings, funerals, and school, but has no problem with thousands of so-called peaceful protesters cramming into your streets, mugging people, hurting people, robbing stores, looting stores, burning down storefronts. The radical left will do anything to get power. They smear Justice Brett Kavanaugh, and there is, they are distressed. Did you ever see anything like that? Justice Kavanaugh. People forget, you know, time goes by. They forget. We don't forget. I don't forget. They're destroying the livelihoods of innocent people. And if Biden wins, which I honestly can't believe can happen. I will have lost to a low IQ individual. I don't want that. I don't want it. Sleepy Joe, I don't want it. But the agitators will go from rioting in the streets to running the halls of government. Can you believe it? The levers, they call it the levers of government. The top 10 most dangerous cities in America are run by Democrats and have been for decades. Now they're trying to impose those policies across the entire country. No one will be safe in Biden's America. I can't even call it Biden's America. Guy doesn't know he's alive. He's gonna be out in 10 days. He's gonna start 10 days. 10 days. I mean, I gave a big speech last night. I said, what am I doing tomorrow night? You're going to New Hampshire. But sir, But, sir, we can cancel New Hampshire because, you know, you had a big night. We can can I said, are you crazy? I don't have the courage to cancel New Hampshire. I got to win New Hampshire, and I love the people, and you've been very good to me. Been very good to me.
You've been very good to me. So New Hampshire was the first state I won, right? Remember, I came in. I was very excited. That was an exciting evening. That was an exciting race. But we don't talk about that anymore. We have to talk about the future. We don't talk about it. That was great. It was important. We've done more than any administration in its first three and a half years in the history of our country. And that's despite phony witch hunts, phony investigations, a phony impeachment based on a phone call that was absolutely perfect. That's despite a pandemic that was probably sent in by China. Who the hell knows how it got here and all over the world? Because China does not want to see me win, I can tell you that. We're not happy with China. I'll tell you what, if Biden got in, China would own the United States very quickly. They'd own it. If the Democrat Party wants to stand with anarchists, criminals, rioters, looters, and flag burners, that's up to them. The Republican Party and you, I can see you. Is there anybody in this place that enjoys burning the American flag? Is there anybody? Please quietly raise your hand. Be careful, it could be very dangerous. The Republican Party will remain the voice of the patriotic heroes who keep America safe and our law enforcement. Right? We are all that stand between the American people and the left wing mob. If you want to save democracy from the mob, then you must vote to defeat an extremely poor candidate. Look, I believe I have the honor of running against the worst candidate ever put up by the Democratic Party. The worst. How do you get worse? I believe he's the worst candidate, the slowest candidate, and I mean in prime time he was the slowest candidate, which was a long time ago, prime time. You know what I don't like, though? They say he's like 78, 79, 78, I guess, right? I know people that are 85, that are 88, 92. Bernie Marcus, Home Depot, he's 92 years old. He's the sharpest guy you'll ever meet. There's nothing, 78 is okay. But that's a bad 78, not a good 78. 78's okay, but he shouldn't say that. You know, they shouldn't say it. The, the press, they, talk, they say he's too old. He's not too old. Seven, he is not too old. But 78 is okay. But I do. I know people in their 90s that are 100% sharp and good physically. Actually, good physically. You want debate? So do I. I want debate still. I want debate still. Tonight, we're honored to be joined by New Hampshire House Republican leader, Dick Hinch. Where's Dick? And I think your great governor is here. Where is the governor? Where's our governor? Hi, Dick. Good job. Do we like Dick? Yes. Where's our governor? He's here. He just met me. I told him, go back. Hi, Steve. Because you have a great governor. And we don't have same-day voting anymore. We don't have same day. What a joke that was last time. Remember? Buses poured up from Massachusetts with a lot of people that weren't going to vote for Trump. And they poured up. Thousands and thousands of people came in on Election Day. And then you had a senator running on the Republican Party who wasn't exactly the greatest for us. But we have done so well here, and we're going to have a big win. And I'm hearing we're going to have a great win. So I want to thank you, Governor. Also with us are state representatives, Al Baldazaro and Fred Doucette. Where are you? Hi, hi, Al. I know these guys so well. Hey, Al, have I taken care of the vets better than you even thought? 
This guy, I met him. He's a big vet. He wanted the vets. He didn't care about anything else but the vets. Honestly, he couldn't have cared less about anybody here except the vets. But I did a good job, right? We did a good job for the vets. Very importantly, very, very U.S. Senate candidate, Corky Messner. Good, Corky. I hear you're doing well. Good, Corky. Get him. We need Corky. Get him. I hear you're doing well, Corky. Congressional candidate, Matt Mowers. Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Great people. A friend of mine for a long time, he said right from the beginning, you're going to win this state, sir. We met him at the primaries. Chairman of New Hampshire Republican Party, Stephen Stepanak. Stephen. Hi, Steve. Great, Steve. Co-chairman of my New Hampshire campaign, Lou Gargiulo. Where's Lou? Lou Gargiulo. Hi, Lou. How am I doing? Are we winning, Lou? Lou, are we winning? Thank you. He said yes. If he said no, he's out of here. And a friend of mine and a friend of this state, he loves this state. And he is a smart cookie. He's so good. I love him on television. He's no games, you know, just looks. He gives it the answer. But he's done a fantastic job. The first person on my whole, you know, you read about all these people. This is the first guy. And uh, he's a great guy. He's a friend of mine, Corey Lewandowski. Great guy. Great guy. Tremendous guy, tremendous help. Thank you, Corey. Are you having a good time, Corey? Who's going to win this year, Corey? <laughs> you bet. I was a little bit slow with that hat, Corey. Ah? Huh? With the help of everyone here today, we've accomplished more in the first three years. We've done so much. We've done so much. You can go over it, taxes, and you can go over what we've done with the military. We passed the biggest tax cuts ever ever in the history of our country. Now they want to raise taxes. Think of it. All my life, I've watched politicians. Don't forget, I've only been doing this for four and a half years. So I haven't been doing it. I've had senators come in. I've had congressmen come in. Sir, I've been doing this for 25 years. And in 25 years, I've only lost three races, sir. I said, but I've only been doing it for four years, and I only won one race, but now I have to win two. One race I won. But it was for president. It was for president. It was for president. But we did the largest tax cut in the history of our country, and we eliminated the most job-destroying regulations in the history of our country. I ended the job-killing Paris Climate Accord. That was a killer. That was meant to hurt the United States, by the way, in case you had any questions. Today, the United States is the number one producer of oil and natural gas anywhere on Earth. To give critically ill patients access to life-saving cures, we passed. And hopefully anybody here doesn't need it. Nobody here. Uh-oh, do you need it? Uh-oh. Don't raise that. Oh, she d is? Is she okay? I'll get it for her. Is she okay? We got to get her on the list. Tell me. Oh, from before. Well, that's a long time before I was president. Does she want to get on the list? Because I've seen you at rallies before. I want to get... Will you please? I want to get his wife on the list. It's called Right to Try. Right to Try. We'll work. He's been a friend of mine. God, come on. He's been here for a long time. He's been, he's been a good guy for a long time. We got to get, is your wife, how's she doing? She couldn't get it before me. Well, we had that with Mueller. You saw that with the Mueller's last night. You saw that, right? Was that a sad, with their incredible daughter, what happened? He said, if Trump was president, 
That wouldn't have happened. And they're right. That would not have happened. We took out al-Baghdadi. Uh, I wish I were president. The uh, You would have had a different solution. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. How about you? Yeah. We'll talk to you later. Right to try. You have no idea. So many people, they used to travel all over the world to get a cure. And now we can sign a quick, simple document. You know, it sounds easy. It wasn't. But it was easy for me. I understood it. And now you sign a document. We give you the greatest medicines, even if they haven't been approved. And if somebody's terminally ill, like in the case of your wife, if somebody's terminally ill, at least you have hope. But it's beyond that, because people have gone home. You have to see some of the results have been incredible. And you saw one of the people the other day, right? That wonderful young lady that was so incredible and spoke so well. And uh, she's a special person. She really is a special person. Thank you. We'll talk to you. Thank you very much. And to bring opportunities to our inner cities, I signed the groundbreaking criminal justice reform prison reform, opportunity zones, permanent funding for historically black colleges and universities. True. And before the China virus came in, before that China virus came in, we had the best job numbers ever recorded in the history of our country. We had almost 160 million Americans working. We had never had numbers like that. The Republican Party is the party of Abraham Lincoln. Remember that. We stand for so much, including Martin Luther King's dream of a nation where our children are judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. You know that. The radical left's effort to divide everyone by race tears us apart. There's so much racial hatred. And it's put there by CNN, by MSDNC. They stoked the flames, and they know it. The good news is their ratings aren't great, so that's OK. They don't have great ratings. But they stoked the flames. Uh-oh, CNN just turned off their camera again. <laughs> they always turn off their camera. Why do I keep doing that? You know, every time I do it, they turn off their camera. They did it last time. I mentioned CNN. They're screaming, turn the camera off! <laughs> so. Our movement is about a brighter future for all Americans of every race, religion, color and creed. Joe Biden spent the last 47 years betraying the African-American community. I've spent the last four years delivering for the African-American community like nobody with the exception possibly of Abraham Lincoln has delivered before. It's true. My first week in office, I withdrew the United States from the last administration's horrible, stupid, insane Trans-Pacific Partnership would have destroyed the U.S. auto industry and many other industries. New Hampshire lost one in four, and I think much more than that, manufacturing jobs following twin disasters of NAFTA and China's entrance into the WTO. It was more than one in four. That statistic is wrong. Please have it changed. <laughs> that is, statistic is wrong. Far more than one in four. Earlier this year, I kept my promise and replaced the NAFTA nightmare with the brand new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. <laughs> they said that couldn't be done. I also took the toughest ever action to stand up to China's pillaging and plundering of American jobs. 
Joe Biden's agenda is made in China. My agenda is made in America. After years of building up other nations, we are finally building up our nation and our jobs, and we're taking care of our people. You know, last night, I got great reviews of the speech and all, but some of the fakers back there, they said, well, it was a little long. He shouldn't have used the White House. Oh, really? Tell me. But they said it was a little old. Then one person, I think it was Chris Wallace, nice guy. He's actually a nice guy. He said that uh, he didn't have the same energy in the speech that he usually has. Well, it's a different kind of a speech. Tonight, I'm in New Hampshire, and we can wing it. You see, actually, Actually, Chris, who has always wanted to be his father, but it never worked out because of a lack of talent. Actually, though, actually, Chris has it wrong. If I did last night's speech here, by now you would have all been walking out. And if I did tonight's speech there, I would have been criticized by being slightly radical. But we're having a good time doing it this way, right? Because we are finally putting America first. Under my administration, America's borders are more secure than ever before. We ended the catch and release, stopped asylum fraud, and we have deported 20,000 gang members and 500,000 criminal aliens. We've already built 300 miles of border wall, and we're adding 10 new miles every single week. And the wall will soon be completed, and our numbers on the border are the best they've ever been. And by the way, you know, Mexico is paying for the wall, just in case you didn't know that. They don't know that. They're paying for the wall. You ever noticed on the wall, everything was wall, wall. They didn't think I was going to get it done because, you know, look, you have one major party controlling Congress and they don't want to give me a wall. So, you know, they're going crazy. Wall, the wall's not getting done. Then I get it done, get it from the military, get it from everything. You know, I'm a developer. I know how to get money. It's one of the developers understand. And now that the wall is almost complete, it'll be soon complete. And it's the wall that border security wanted so badly. This is the one. But now that it's built, you never hear about the wall. They don't talk about it anymore. They don't talk about it anymore. It's incredible. But the wall will soon be complete. We've invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military and launched the first new branch of the U.S. Armed Forces in nearly 75 years, the Space Force. And Al, in honor of you, we have passed VA Choice and VA Accountability Act. That guy's been bugging me for years. Al has been bugging me. What's in that hat, Al? Let me see. Let me. That's not bad. Al, he's been bugging me for years. Did you ever think we'd get VA Choice, VA Accountability? Did you ever really believe it? Thank you, Al. I withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal, a disaster. $150 billion we paid Iran for a basically short-term deal. And we gave them one, what's more impressive, we also gave them $1.8 billion in cash. Cash! Many plane loads. You know what that took? Many, many plane loads. 1.8 billion. I said, that's when I realized how powerful a president is in the United States. 
When a president has the right, which, by the way, I don't believe he did have that right, okay? When a president has the right to go into the banks and take out $1.8 billion and hand it to people that hate our guts, that's power. That's power. I don't believe he, I don't believe he had the right to do it. I kept my promise, recognized the true capital of Israel, and opened the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. And I recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And we achieved the first breakthrough in the Middle East in 25 years. You saw that just last week. UAE, highly respected, Mohammed, highly respected UAE and Israel. And now they're all going to be coming in. Now they're all saying, how come you didn't tell us about this? You'll have peace in the Middle East, and yet we're moving our troops out. It's pretty amazing, actually. We'll get no credit for it, but that's all right. Remember that, Caitlin. Cover that properly, Caitlin. We like Caitlin. Together, we've spent the last four years cleaning up 47 years of Biden disasters. Joe Biden has spent his entire career on the wrong side of history. He supported NAFTA, China's entry. He's done so many things. This man, if you look at what he's done, we went into a deal. The Korea, you know about the Korea deal? Hillary Clinton's deal along with Biden. They promised 250,000 jobs, right? 250,000 jobs. And they were right, except all those jobs went to South Korea. They didn't come to us. He wants mass amnesty. He wants illegal aliens to be taken care of, health care and every other way. And he wants to raise your taxes. Look, your taxes are going to go through the roof. He's going to destroy your health care. He's going to have socialized medicine. Remember what Obama said 28 times? You can keep your doctor, you can keep your plan. Turned out to be a lie. Now you're going to lose your doctor again. And we're going to lose 185 million people who have private health insurance. Who has private health insurance here? And you love it, right? You love it. It's luxury, it's good, it's beautiful. And you have the greatest, you're going to lose it. Hate to tell you, under his plan, you're going to lose your private health care. So here's the guy, I go into Texas two weeks ago. We had, by the way, on the highway and the roadways, thousands and thousands of people, like lined up on the runway in New Hampshire, by the way. What happened to those people? But we had thousands and thousands of people. So I'm in Texas. I'm also last week in Florida. We got total endorsement from all of the sheriffs all over Florida, Ohio, many places. But think of Texas. He's against oil and gas. He's against guns, and he's against religion. So you're in Texas. You're in Texas, where I'm winning by a lot. They say, Texas is very close. Uh, I don't think so. They said that last time, too. Remember they said it last time? You know, for them to call it early, you have to be really. So I heard from, for a year, Texas is going to be very close. It's going to be everybody believe that, except for the people that lived in Texas. So at 8 o'clock, the, po the polls closed, and they said, Donald Trump has won the state of Texas simultaneously with the closing. But I'm now running in Texas against a man who's against oil, guns, and God. How do you win Texas? I said this, you could bring George Washington back as your presidential candidate. You could bring Abraham Lincoln, let's put him as the vice presidential candidate. Run in Texas and other states, you couldn't win. You couldn't win. Now, they're not going to win. We're going to win this. And you're against the oil stuff, too, because his whole thing on oil, no fracking, no this, no that. You know, New England has the highest energy costs in the United States. And you know why? because Governor Cuomo will not let a pipeline go across the tip of New York State so that oil and gas, of which we have plenty, can come. And you know where you buy your energy from? Russia. Did you know that? You have ships, much of it, from Russia. 
because Governor Cuomo, New York, won't allow a pipeline, and they're desperate to have something happen in Upper New York State. And those are great people, but they've been treated very badly. But they won't allow a pipeline. By not allowing a pipeline, we're trying to do it through essentially eminent domain. By not allowing a pipeline to go through Upper New York State and create a lot of jobs for them, you have the highest energy prices in the United States by far. Thank you, New York. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Cuomo. Biden voted for the Iraq war. I was against the Iraq war. He opposed the mission to take out Osama bin Laden. He opposed the killing of Soleimani. You remember that one? He oversaw the rise of ISIS, and he cheered the rise of China as a positive development for America and for the world. That's not a positive development. You know, before they went into the WTO, China was flatlined for years and years and decades, flatlined. And then they got into the WTO, and a lot of bad things happened. First, China stole our jobs, plundered our intellectual property, and unleashed the virus. And now China is trying to just hug and kiss Joe Biden. They want him so badly. Look, if you like China, you should vote for Biden. That I can tell you. How about his son? Do you think the son, maybe there's a conflict? How about his son? Where's Hunter? Where is Hunter? Where is Hunter? Does anybody know? Where's Hunter? He's in another country right now, probably, ripping off another country. Now, as soon as Biden became vice president, bad things happened with respect to Hunter. If that happened with respect to my family, I wouldn't be standing, I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that. What a disgrace. What a disgrace. Ukraine, and it's not just Ukraine, and it's not just China. But he goes into China, takes out $1.5 billion to manage, and he knows nothing, and he wasn't even employed. He got thrown out of the armed services. So give me a break. It's a disgrace what's happening. There's a double, there's, there's a thing happening with the media like nobody's ever seen before. These people right here. Because if that happened to a Republican in particular, if any of that stuff happened to me, it would be brutal. But it happened to him, they don't want to talk about it. And how about the questions asked by Anderson Cooper yesterday? Anderson Cooper, he's interviewed me a lot over the years, and I always got along with him, but they were tough interviews. Did you hear the questions? And Biden kept looking down. I think he was reading the answers off a teleprompter, right? I think he was reading the answers off a teleprompter, and that's happened before. And how about David Muir of ABC? He's a nice guy, right? How soft were those questions? How soft were those? They don't ask me questions like that. They got fire pouring out of their eyes. No, Mr. Vice President, what do you think of this? How was your breakfast, sir? Did you enjoy it? <laughs> when I banned travel from China, Biden called it hysterical and xenophobic. He even used somewhere along the line the word racist. He always figures, they always want to get that word in there. If we had listened to Joe, hundreds of thousands of more Americans would have died. But instead, my decision saved, saved thousands and thousands of lives. And then we banned Europe very early, because I saw what was going on it, really in Italy and Spain and France. When the virus arrived, we launched the largest national mobilization since World War II. Mike Pence did a great job. We produced more than 100,000 ventilators within weeks. And not a single American who has needed a ventilator has been denied a ventilator, not one. You heard all about, and now we're producing ventilators, hard to produce, expensive, complex. We're producing them now for the rest of the world. 188 countries were affected by this. We pioneered advances in treatment that have reduced the monthly rate. And you look at this, the mortality rate has been reduced by 85% since April. Think of that. 85% since April. 
Under Operation Warp Speed, three different vaccines are right now in final stage trials. If you go back three years, that would have been something that would have been impossible to even discuss. It would have taken years. We will produce a vaccine this year, and together we will defeat the virus that's already getting defeated. And by the way, another big Democrat hoax, another big hoax. I want football back. I'm the one that's been saying, is that a correct statement? I want football back. These are young, strong guys. They're not going to be affected by the virus. If you look at it, it's generally older people, older people that have heart conditions, that have diabetes, that have problems. These are big, strong guys. They'll be just fine. But I want football back. I've been calling for football to be back, including Big Ten. Big Ten, get with it. Open up your season, Big Ten. And the Dems don't want it back for political reasons. But now their new line, this is like Russia, 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 you know, all this crap they come up with. Now their new line is they are trying to blame me and keep football shut down. They want to keep it shut down, and they're saying that President Trump shut it down. I'm the one that wants it open, so they're reversing it. They're playing a big con game. It's just a con game, and that's what we're dealing with, and we have to defeat them on November 3rd. I want football back and Big Ten open. And now, the other day, Joe Biden came up with a plan to impose a blanket shutdown. He'd be willing to do another blanket, and we had to do it. We blanket, we shut down, we saved millions of lives. Instead of the number we have today, 175,000, we could have had 2 million today instead. It would have been unacceptable, uns unsustainable, unsustainable. We did everything right. We did it right. We closed it down. We stopped China. We stopped Europe. Now we're opening it up, and we're opening it up to record numbers, despite the fact that the Democrats are keeping their states shut down and hurting people that live in those states shut down as long as possible. But now Biden wants to do another blanket shutdown, possibly, that would decimate the economy and cause suicides, drug overdoses, alcohol abuse, heart attacks, joblessness, you'd have jobs, all of the problems that it causes, because it's not just a one-sided equation. A shutdown causes big problems also. And at this point, when the economy is roaring back, we had record job numbers this last quarter, over 9 million jobs. We're going to throw that all out? We have a market, you know, your stock market. Who has 401ks here? Your 401ks and your stocks, when you have stocks, would be obliterated. And right now, we have just, on two of your markets, as you know, S&P and NASDAQ, you're at new records, and you're about to hit another new record. Think of it. Who would have thought the stock market? And hopefully we're at the end of this horrible China virus. Came from China, they should have stopped it, and they did. But who would have thought, just who would have thought, that the stock market is at record levels right now? Record levels. And everything else is going to follow. Before the virus, we created an economic miracle, and now we're doing it again. We did the Paycheck Protection Program, where we saved more than 200,000 jobs in New Hampshire alone. 200,000, right? Over the past three months, we've gained so many different, if you look at Retail numbers, take a look at our retail numbers. They're literally at records. Look at some of the numbers being announced by companies. They're at records. Can you imagine giving that all up and starting again? It's not acceptable. If I'm reelected, we will create 10 million jobs over the next 10 months, and we'll do that easily. The Biden agenda with big tax increases and big regulation increases 
would immediately kill everything. You will go into a depression, and I'm very good at predicting this, you will go into a depression, the likes of which this country has not seen since 1929, and who knows, maybe worse than that. They are playing a suicide mission if they want to raise your taxes. They want to, they want to raise your taxes by $4 trillion. And that's going to be almost everybody. They're saying for the rich? No, not for the rich. They're going to be raising everybody's taxes almost. Joe Biden is running on the most extreme far left platform of any nominee in American history. And if our foreign adversaries were devising a plan to destroy the United States from within, all they have to look is at the Biden-Harris. How about her? Is she a beauty? What a beauty that is. They pick a woman who starts off, she starts off sort of strong. She's one of the favorites. Within a period of a few months, she goes down, down, 15, 12, 11, 9, 8, 5, 3, 2. Then she goes, I'm going to leave because I've decided that I want to leave. I want to leave. She left because she wouldn't have gotten any votes. She was terrible. And this would be your president, possibly? I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, I want to see the first woman president also, but I don't want to see a woman president get into that position the way she do it, and she's not competent. She's not competent. They're all saying, we want Ivanka. They want to eliminate America's borders in the middle of a pandemic, suspend all deportations, restore catch and release, and expand horrible, dangerous, disgusting sanctuary cities. They want to give illegal aliens government health care and taxpayer-funded lawyers. That's what we need is more lawyers. Let's get some. Let's get some more lawyers into the act. They want to end national security travel bans from jihadist nations, very dangerous, and increase refugee admissions by 700 percent. This is in the Bernie Sanders, Crazy Bernie. You know Crazy Bernie. And a lot of his people are going to vote for me just like they did last time. You know why? Because of trade. Because I agree with Bernie Sanders, but my trade policies are much tougher than his, and I'm able to do it. All you have to do is, how was China doing last year with my trade policy? Not too well, and we had the best year we've ever had. So we're going to get a lot of Bernie Sanders voters because they like my attitude on trade. They really like it, because I've been telling people for years, our country is being ripped off by China and many other countries, including, I hate to say it, our allies, our allies have been ripping us big. And you heard me say last night, NATO, I got $130 billion from them, first time going up to $400 billion a year from NATO countries by saying, you got to do it, you got to do it. And Secretary, General Secretary Stoltenberg said it can't be done. He, he could not believe it. He's actually my biggest fan, and nobody ever calls him for a quote. Call him sometime. They want to abolish cash bail and cut funding for law enforcement. They want to end. We want to increase law enforcement, not cut law enforcement. And by the way, Pat Lynch, a great guy, New York. New York, really great. Uh, New York's finest, right? They've been, uh, their rights have been taken away from them, literally. They're, they're not allowed to do their job, but Patch Lynch, Lynch, they say, he said, the first time in history that they know of, New York's finest have endorsed a candidate. The candidate is Donald Trump. First time they've done it.
And all over the country, the sheriffs of Florida, all of Texas, all over the country, Ohio, law enforcement's endorsing Trump. I cannot imagine them getting any law enforcement endorsements. If they do, please let me know and we'll have a little discussion. We'll ask, why did that happen? They want to end school choice and ban charter schools. They want to abolish American energy, including all of the things I said before. And it add to that coal and add to that shale. A vote for Republicans is a vote for safe communities, great jobs, a bright future, the American dream for all Americans. And there is no limit to what we can achieve with four more years. So in conclusion, I have to say this. Over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world that's happening already. And we will end our reliance on China once and for all. We'll do it here. Like we used to do in the good old days before we owed trillions of dollars. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, surge federal prosecutors into high crime communities and neighborhoods, and ban sanctuary cities. We will kill our terrorist enemies as we've been doing while keeping America out of the endless foreign wars. I go to Dover and I greet these incredible families of soldiers that have been so sadly killed, so sadly killed. It's such a shame. I go to the hospital. I go to Walter Reed Medical Center. It's incredible. The doctors are so talented. I see what they can do but soldiers so badly hurt. And they're really acting as police. They're acting as police. No, we're very low in Afghanistan now in terms of numbers of troops. We're getting out. We'll be getting out soon. We're very low in Iraq. We're very low in Syria, except we kept the oil. We left some behind for the oil, if you don't mind. We kept the oil. We should have kept the oil in Iraq, like I've been saying. We'll appoint prosecutors, judges, and justices who believe in enforcing the law, not their own political agenda, which is what we have in many cases right now. And the next president will be, in my opinion, responsible for two, three, four, and maybe, maybe even five U.S. Supreme Court justices. You better vote for me. You better vote for me or you're going to have the greatest depression you've ever seen. We will uphold religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms. Second Amendment. We will end surprise medical building require it's already done i signed it nobody can believe i did it price transparency you know what that is you know how big that is where you're able to actually negotiate with hospitals see their prices compare it you know who likes it good hospitals and good doctors other people don't like it it's the biggest thing and nobody even talks about it but i've already put it into effect the bad news is it goes into effect on january 1st you better make sure you elect me so I get credit for it. Otherwise, could you imagine if Sleepy Joe got in and medical prices and drug prices and everything are dropping? He said, I wonder what happened. What happened? And I did it all. I'll be so angry at New Hampshire, I'll never speak to you again. Now, all these things, what we're doing with drugs, you know, we instituted a favored nations laws. We instituted favored nations. That's going to drop your prices 50, 60, 70 percent. And I'm the only president in 51 years 
Last year, drug prices went down a little, not much. They went down first time in 51 years. Favored nations could drop at 50, 60, or 70 percent. And on top of that, I instituted rebates, where the rebates go toward price reductions and back to the customer, instead of to a middleman. So, we will protect Medicare, and we will protect Social Security, and we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. America will land the first woman on the moon, and the United States will be the first nation to plant its beautiful American flag. Do we love our American flag on Mars? Above all, we will teach our children to love our country, to honor our history, and be inspired by the words of the New Hampshire state motto. Have you ever heard of these words? Live free or die! Live free or die! Vote for those people. And you do. You have a great governor. Vote for your people. Vote for your governor. You have a great governor. From Portsmouth to Dixville, from Concord to Keene. I know a friend from Keene. Great guy. I had a friend from Keene a long time. Keene, New Hampshire. And Merrimack to Manchester. We will fight for every job, every family, and every neighborhood. And we will fight for every vote. We have to win. We have no choice. Can I be honest with you? I'll, I'll tell, look, we're working hard. We're all working. I don't have to do this. I could get off that beautiful plane. It used to be black and white with a red stripe. That was mine. But that's Air Force One, you know? I get off that beautiful plane. I could come up and say, Ladies and gentlemen of New Hampshire, you have no choice. You have to vote for me. Because if you don't, you'll be put in radical lefties. You'll have a depression. Your stocks will be worthless. Your 401ks will be gone. There'll be crime all over your streets. So I'm not going to work at all. I'm leaving now. But you have to vote for me because you have no choice, right? I could say. Right? Right? We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the oceans, blazed the trail, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America the greatest nation in the history of the world. And we are making it greater. We will be greater than ever before we will. Incredible citizens like you, the people of New Hampshire, help build this country. And together, we are taking back our country. We are not going to let the radical left socialists or communists take our country. We're not going to let it. We're returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting. And we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one movement, one people, one family and one nation under God. And we don't take 
the beautiful word God out of our Pledge of Allegiance, do we? You don't do it. They did it twice. They did it twice. Then they say, well, we didn't mean that. Oh, I see. I was listening once. I said, that's right. You know, you don't know what it is. What happened? What happened? They did it on purpose. They did it twice. That's where they're coming from. You can be fools and you can be fooled, but that's where they're coming from. So don't be surprised, but they're not going to get there. We're not going to let it happen. We're not going to let our country be destroyed by a bunch of nut jobs. America will soon be thriving like never before. And together with the people of New Hampshire that have meant so much to me, and I brought down opioid and I brought down drug problems for you by 19%, and nobody even talks about it. 19. I talk about New Hampshire a lot because you had one of the proportionally worst problems of any country, of any, of any state in this incredible country. You had one of the worst problems of any of the states, and I talk about you a lot. It was incredible, and you still have. But we brought it down 19 percent, and people are absolutely shocked. And if it weren't for the China plague, the number would be 25 or 30 percent. That really hurt us, because people sort of went back to some old ways, because they don't want to be shut down any longer, Joe. Don't you understand that? They don't want to be shut down. So I worked very hard on that for this state and for other states. But this was a state that was so severely impacted with the drug problem. And that wall is stopping them, and it's stopping them like never before. It's stopping them like never before. I want to thank New Hampshire for all you've done for me. I want to thank New Hampshire. You were my first victory, as I said. But you are going to lead a nation to the most important victory and the most important election that we've ever had. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again.